Good everybody and welcome to an international flavoured uh, episode of Face to Face. Uh, tonight I am joined by South African singer Cindy Louise, who's uh, just about to bring out a brilliant track called Innocence. Cindy Louise, thanks for joining me tonight. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm super happy to be here. So going straight into it, um, who inspired you growing up? Oh, there's so many people. I must admit, I think my musical journey of, you know, artists that inspire me <laughs> kind of changes very drastically. When I was growing up, I liked a lot of ABBA because that's technically all my parents listen to. So, I mean, but who doesn't like ABBA, you know, fair enough, fair enough. And later in life, I was inspired by Mozart. And currently now in my life, I'm inspired by a lot of metalcore kind of music. So kind of like Panic of the Disco, Dorothy, Yonica, Bad Omen, Sleep Token, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, the really like nitty gritty kind of, I like the little underlayer kind of stuff when something's very cool when, uh, when you listen very carefully to it. So... How did you actually get your start musically? I actually always wanted to play the piano. And my parents always said like, okay, sure, you know, but, you know, getting a piano is a, quite a big investment. So they were like, you're really going to have to practice, okay? So I said, yes, yes, I'll practice. And eventually I got them to send me for lessons. And the teacher happened to be a vocal teacher too. And eventually I just fell in love with singing more than the piano. So it kind of was a waste of an investment with the piano after all. So uh, do you remember your first show, first ever show? Yes, I do. I was 16 and I had such like bad stage fright that I had this massive hat on that I couldn't see anybody and was intentional. And um, yeah, from there, actually, it got better. I don't get stage fright anymore. I just, I love being on stage. It's it's my place, you know? Um, so that kind of answers my next question. Um, <laughs> do you get nervous uh, before a show or recording? I only get nervous if I have to sing a cover because... I really suck at remembering other people's lyrics and then I kind of blank out where if it's my own music, I mean, I can just do whatever the hell I want. I can change the lyrics if I really want. I, I did one show where the band and I were completely lost and I just made it up on the spot and I wasn't nervous at all. So if it's my original music, I don't get nervous at all. So what do you, what do you, uh, Sorry. What do you do in your downtime? Mm, I love to read and I actually just started sewing. So that's a new project of mine, which is quite exciting. It's going to teach me patience. <laughs> so have you got any funny stories either from shows or uh, on, on the way to shows? I have too many stories, actually. Like, how long do you have? But uh, I think the worst one for me is I was invited to come sing to, at a festival. And, yeah, it was a completely nudist festival. So I still sang, but I definitely kept my glasses on the whole time, like my sunglasses, because I didn't know where to look. <laughs> was, you know, people can do what they want. I'm totally open to that. But it's not really my thing. <laughs> So, who are some of your favourite musicians? Uh, currently? Yeah, like, um, if there's any mm -hmm. uh, South African singers or any, uh, yeah, any musicians, really. Yeah, I really, I get inspired by a lot of different musicians, but at the moment, like, I really like um, All Time Low's new album that came out. It's called Tell Me I'm Alive. As soon as I heard that album, like, you know, sometimes when you listen to like music, you're like, yeah, I like the first like three songs or this or that, but I'm not so fond of this or that one. But I can honestly say like from start to finish, I love that whole album. I could listen to it day in, day night. I don't get bored of it. I didn't even need to kind of get into it. I just really like the sound. It's really cool. So definitely like them. 
And yeah, I like Yonica too, because I like, um, I like how they experiment with sound, you know, that's very cool. And I'm always obsessed with the singer being a singer myself. That's always what draws me towards music. And when I hear incredible technique, I just fall in love, especially when you hear the kind of underlying layers that only happens in a recording studio. And if you're a singer, you know, and if you're not, well, it makes the whole music whole, but you know, as a singer, you appreciate it that much more. And I like that. So uh, have you got any cool stories about um, meeting famous singers or? I actually have, like, um, I have met um, the band Bad Flower. I don't know if you guys know them, but that was pretty cool. We, I actually did the whole VIP pass and it was really worth it because honestly, I just had so many questions for them. I got a bit starstruck in the moment. So I was like, oh my soul, how do I even ask these people? But everyone I have met, even um, Kelsey Carter, like a lot of the bands, they're so super duper chilled. And they're so super duper nice. And of course they are. I mean, everyone's human, you know, but sometimes you kind of just get so in awe. But when I, when I get the chance to meet somebody, it's, it's really, it's really amazing. And I love talking to them about their creative process. It's my favorite thing to do. And I get very inspired and I learn new techniques, which is also pretty cool. So, uh, I'm going to throw in another question, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Is, is there any, are there any musicians that you'd like to work with? Mm, I'd like to work with the band Bad Omens because honestly, I think our voices, Noah is the singer and I think our voices would just be so beautiful together. Also, I just feel the way they structure the music in the sense of like how they build the emphasis and the climax in their songs, especially their new album. Well, even, I mean, even the earlier stuff, honestly, it's very interesting to see how they do everything and the instrumentation is just phenomenal. So I would love to work with them. I'm pretty lucky that I get to work with really cool people now. I'm working with Eric Carver and he's the guitarist from Red Helen. And he is just honestly so phenomenal. Like his skill is just next level, next world. And I'm just so lucky that he's... Um, doing all the guitar and all of my like later stuff. It's very cool. I'm very thankful. Uh, I was wondering actually, have you got a um, process when it comes to uh, your writing? I do. It's kind of like a yes and no. So, I mean, every song that I always write has to start from somewhere and it usually starts from like me being incredibly angry or frustrated or something like that. And I feel like that kind of energy gets me going into like lyrics. And I find lately I will be so inspired by songs or like I'll be reading a phrase and I'll be so interested in how that phrase like either rhymes or I'll manipulate the words a bit and I'll start like that. And from there it will build. And every song is different, you know, like I could either write all the lyrics in one go or I could go to the piano and write something what will purely be rhythmical and I will basically do everything after that but what I really try to focus on is building in the song and making something very theatrical especially with my new music that's coming out it's quite different in the sense of the build and all the underlying layers that I put a lot of effort into vocal wise I think it's been the most difficult but the most satisfying uh recording that I've ever done because there's just so much thought put into it that it's not that the other songs are lacking that but it's just that this has so much more yeah I mean um just coming on to um the new song it's called uh, Innocence mm -hmm. uh, it could be found online um first of all I've got to say what a song oh thanks <laughs> I'm so glad you like it <laughs> I um I played it on my show um a few weeks ago a radio show mm -hmm. and um got yeah it, as soon as soon as that first note hit I was like this is this is special so how did you actually come up uh, yeah how did you actually create the song 
I basically, so the lyrics I've had for quite some time, I wrote them, I think like two years ago, but it wasn't really the lyrics that was hard to, to get out. It was more the sound that I wanted, especially like tone wise, because I wanted it to sound like very broad and I'm naturally a soprano. So I have a very high voice, but in uh, like endeavors, I'm training my voice to be a little more broad and lower. But when you get to the recording studio, like I knew I wanted a certain kind of sound and it's not that I wanted to sound like someone, but I wanted like a certain effect. And we just kept basic, especially the verses, we just kept like recording and recording and recording until I was like, yeah, that's the verse I like. And there's also like a whole lot of really cool little layers in there. And I especially love adapting some kind of vocal ability in the sense of adding some operatic notes that I just heard. So that was really cool to do. And I'm really working on the kind of like screaming rock kind of sound. So I really loved, I loved getting that especially because when I had it in production the, the 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 key is very high so when it came for me to do the screaming I was like oh it's a bit too high for me we can't transpose everything now so it was it was cool to manipulate my vocals in that way I really enjoyed that so I think that was the most difficult thing but when it all came together I was just honestly so happy with it 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 was exactly what I wanted it to be and even more, even more. So yeah. Yeah, I bet just um, I was reading the lyrics earlier, and wow, powerful, powerful song. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I really wanted to do something metaphorical. You know that it's kind of like, kind of when you hear it and you're listening thoughtfully to the lyrics, you kind of have a picture playing in your mind of what you would associate that with. So I think it came out pretty cool, but I'm so glad you said that. Thank you. Uh, definitely. Um, so have you got any other projects you're working on? I do. I actually have an EP coming out the 2nd of February and Innocence is the first song. So you guys already have a sneak peek, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's a three song EP and it's kind of got the same vibe, but the songs are different, if that makes sense. So if you like Evanescence in the 2000s and you like Paramore, you're going to love this. Sorry, second. No, I said if you're going to, if you liked uh, Evanescence in the early 2000s and you like Paramore and you're kind of like a Twilight girly, you're going to love this music. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be up your alley. So I'm, I'm struggling to uh, hear. Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh, can you, sorry, can you repeat that? Of course. So I said, if you liked uh, Evanescence and Paramore in the early 2000s and you're a Twilight fan, then you're definitely going to like this music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. You're gonna love it. Don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully. Yay, te yay technical uh, <laughs> technical gremlins. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so, a question I like to ask all my guests: um, What effect has music had on your mental health? I think for me, especially, it's had quite a huge impact. I always say that music definitely saves me and because it's so important to me, it's literally like the air I breathe. I, Whenever I feel that life is a bit too much for me, not only writing music helps me or, or connect with people in a sense, but it helps drown out all the negativity that I'm myself feeling or that the world's putting on me. So, and it's also nice to know that, you know, somebody gets you. I always feel that humans are are, you know, creatures that like to relate. So when you hear a singer singing something and you're like, oh, my soul, you just, you get it. You get exactly what I'm feeling. And that's always what I try to do myself, you know, when I write music. It might be hard to either get out or say, or it might be like, oh, this is really cool. You know, I feel empowered by it. But I just always want someone to feel something when they listen to my music because that's how much music itself has helped me. 
Uh, music really is the best. I know it's a cliche, but it really is the best medicine when it comes to mental health. Yeah, exactly, a hundred percent. And I mean, it's not even like mentally; it's also physically. I when I get nervous because sometimes I struggle with anxiety. When I get nervous, either in like public places or something like that, I just honestly start singing, like not to the top of my lungs, obviously, because then everyone will definitely be staring. But uh, that breath control itself helps calm you. And it's just so fascinating how that helps, how a certain vibration of a certain tone helps. And it, honestly, music is just so amazing that it does all of that and more. Brilliant. So uh, that's going to do it for the interview today. So, Cindy Louise, th big thank you for joining me on Face to Face. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was great. And I can't wait to uh, hear what you've got in, uh, got in store. Definitely. Thanks so much for having me on the show. And I wish all of your listeners a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye.